Good morning. First morning in Palm Springs. It's so nice here right now. California's in capital of the world, Palm Springs, California. 107.3 Mod FM. And here we are coming to you from Jean Autry Trail. I think I'm gonna try to find some pretty little mid-century houses to show you. Let's see if we can find anything. I think there's some over by the uh, the Ace Hotel. So let's go let's go in that neighborhood. So this is Vina Real. Yeah. Let's see what we can find. So I I saw it in the bagel shop, but one of the realtors here has laid out a little mid-century tour of the uh, with all the more well-known brightly colored doors and that would be a fun one to look up I'm sure you could find that online let's try this also the different areas have different names like this is called Indian Canyons they also have the movie colony and all sorts of other homes I just stumbled upon this it's just in a regular little neighborhood but look at it it goes on and on and on Wow houses against the mountains. I think it's gone on to influence things. We're watching uh, something about 50 years of masterpiece. Thank you, Paul. Look at the baby. And Emmy loves it. Look, Emmy. We have to come up with a um, controversial thing so that this video gets more views. Oh like what? what was like the video I just side? watched with a woman like named Coco. They lost her hamster. Was oh, that what we're gonna watch next? Yeah, let's watch that. Let's switch over. Oh, <laughs> come on, we only have an hour and 15 minutes left. This is how Jackie and I watch content. Five minutes of one thing and then, oh no, wait, I just thought of this. <laughs> let's watch this. <laughs> what? I broke my collarbone today. Put it in the title and people will watch it. Paul broke his collarbone. Ouch! Do you care it's more? It's unfortunate that Paul broke his collarbone today. But I'm glad that you clicked here because if you're here, you may as well say, <laughs> punch that subscribe button. We are about to watch a mid-century classic that neither Jackie nor I have ever seen mm -hmm. called Pillow Talk with Doris Day and Rock Hudson. We're trying to watch stylish movies from the 60s or something inspiring with the color and the style yeah. because we passed a lot of houses today with, with lots of doors that are bright beautiful colors mm -hmm. but we don't know what color is ours yet i think screens. we're going to see a lot of pink in this film don't you pinks and oranges and light blues i'm outside now and we're starting to hunker down on our projects i'm starting to do some felt sewing with my sequin. So I'm gonna lay some of the stuff out that I use. For this project, I will be using felt. This is the base felt, and this is what I'll be sewing on. Then I've also got some different colors to use, sort of the highlight color. This nice yellow, and also this blush color, which I've used before. I just put together a couple of little kits of the sequins that I'll be using for this project. So these are the sequins that I've chosen. It's kind of a New Year's theme. I chose lots of gold and little champagne bottles and champagne coupes. These are sort of the filler sequins that I'll be using. Golds, little starbursts. 
and some different colors of blue, some greens, and some other little flowers. Okay, I used some of my vintage trays to hold all of my sequins. So I'm gonna use this today to keep them separated. To keep the sequins in place, I'm using gold seed beads. That's right, Emmy, gold seed beads. Some white thread, beading needles, mini scissors to snip away mini pieces of thread. Later I'll use some ribbon. And then I'll be using these scissors later to cut. I really like coming out to Palm Springs obviously because it's Palm Springs and I get to visit Paul. Also, we tend to have more time to work on our creative projects. This time I'm working on my felt and sequin banners that I haven't finished yet. We'll watch some movies and this will be what we're doing for the next couple of hours. These are my little trays, my little tools, and the sequins that I plan on using. We're, we're working on our projects right now and I want to show you Paul's setup. See how you're doing? Well, I'm glad you checked in. Um, what I'm doing is working on some ornaments. I've been making them for a little while now and I'm happy with how they're turning out. The best part is um, having a dog that knows exactly where to sit when I'm trying to work around small things and <laughs> blades and wine um, and sharp objects, just making sure that she knows I need as little mobility as possible is why, it's so, why you get a dog. If Paul needs to get up for any reason, what are you making? This will be it's pretty. an ornament with these beads that I, I'm sorry, I made these glass beads and then I adhesed a bead on the back, which is these little guys right here that I found at Michael's. They're just like little, almost like, like a copper tube, right? tubes. And I crazy glued them onto the back of the glass marbles. Mm -hmm. And then you just slide it. You doing okay? So again, <laughs> there's a little pipe. And see how it goes right through there? Oh, I like that. It'll stay on. Yeah. And these are his, the, all the beads that he made. You can buy them, find them in the um, gardening section in Fake Flowers at Michael's. And they're like $3.99 for a container like this, so you can make a whole bunch of them. It's great. Fun yeah. <laughs> way to uh, take old magazines and things like that and preserve them. And I just lost a needle, but I found it. And I find beading very meditative, do you? I do too. We were watching a Netflix Christmas movie. And that's my favorite time of year, being here with Lady Jackie. Me too. It was cold out today. We thought it was going to rain. It didn't know. But so we went in the hot tub and it was so lovely. It was. Back to work. Good morning. Today we are finishing what we didn't finish yesterday. Morning. Oh, hi. Just having a little iced coffee. It's really nice out today, we, maybe today. So now Paul is going to show us how he makes his candles. I don't know the process. It'll be nice to see how he does it. Come on over. Okay, let's do it. Best thing to get wax off your hands, dishwashing detergent, not soap. Detergent? Yeah, it's, it, it takes the oil out. Oh. Because it gets very greasy when you're working with the wax. So this, yeah. I just cut the top of the bag off because it's 25 pounds of wax that I'm working with and I was getting like, I had to scoop so down, down yeah. so low. So I just cut the top of the bag off, but you can feel how. Oh yeah, it's waxy. So this is, <laughs> it's waxy, it's wax. <laughs> um, it's coconut paraffin blend from Candle Science. Somebody were interested, it's IGI 6046 on Candle Science. So this is the wax, So Whoa. this is the end of the wax. I have another 25 pounds sitting over there so that I can keep making. But this right now probably, I think there's probably, I'm gonna guess like nine pounds left. And so when I bought it, I bought a really big knife, thinking that I would slice it, but it's so soft, you just need, I use a wooden spoon and Let's just start, right? I have a question for your viewers, if anyone else makes candles. This is the this is the double boiler that I put the wax into, and for a while I was mixing the scent in here, mm -hmm. and it was fine, it works, I'm probably gonna do it today, but the scent sometimes- Transfers lingers, to the other, I was lingers. wondering about that. So what I did is I bought a big measuring cup, yeah. but the problem with this is it stays, the glass is not the same temperature as the, like yeah. this is still hot, so the wax stays longer mm -hmm. at the ideal temperature. Once you pour it in here, it starts to harden. So 
what I want to know is what's the easiest way to get scent out of something like this. Yeah. I tried vinegar and hot water. It well, it's porous. Like really is time. I guess metal's porous, right? Yeah, this doesn't smell like anything right now, so it's fine. But oh, I think I ran into the dishwasher. Yeah. But I just don't want to have to run into the dishwasher. Maybe I should actually just buy like three or four. I wonder if you could put a liner in. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. I was wondering what could sustain the heat. If you know. Well, Comment so below. you know uh, a crock pot, they have those liners that you can put mm. in. I bet that's what You're you right. could do. Take a look at all of these different tools. So these all right here, I've been, I've been cleaning out old candle vessels. Yeah. And this one I've been dying to show you actually, this was a gift. It's this company called American Bee Company. Have you heard of them? Uh -uh. She, she gave it to me. It's really pretty. Specifically to make a candle, it's so pretty. So these are all old like TJ Maxx candles that I cleaned out. And then these I'm gonna make my mom, she loves margaritas, and one of the scents I have yeah. is margarita, so I'm gonna make her margarita candles. That's really cute, it has a little beyond. So the wicks, which I'll show you when we get there, okay. and the scents, which we'll also, we'll, we'll choose a scent together. Okay. But let's start with the wax. Measurements are pretty precise, even though I still think I'm not adding enough oil, because I think my, my candles have a good throw. The throw is the... What is that? Throw means like how much you can smell it around the candle, and I feel like for me, my candles, they're these size right here, but you can only really smell them, I would say like six to eight feet of tops around, like, and not just maybe the size like of a room. candle. The, but the like a room, the size of a room. You can't smell that candle that's on the TV over there unless you are in and around the bedroom. Like, I don't feel like you can smell it as much over here. Yeah. But ones that I make that are larger definitely have a better throw too. So this is my little scale. Tear, okay. And I've been, I started by making pound of wax candles and then I realized that like it takes so much setup and like time that I started doing a pound and a half mm -hmm. instead because I can make seven candles with a pound and a half and I get like more done. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Candle science, I, I they're like, I think they're like the, the, the big boys out there when it comes to candles, but they're great. They ship really fast. I even, like last time I confirmed my order, like placed it, and then I realized I forgot to get, I wanted to get more holders, and I went in super fast, and you were able to cancel it and get refunded right away and resubmit, so that's also pretty, I usually push it down a little bit just so I can get as much wax in there as possible. We're at almost a pound. So you really stuff it in there. Yeah, because once it melts down, it becomes, you'll see it just becomes liquid. Yeah. I can't remember, did you say you have tried making candles before? My sister a couple years ago wanted to, every year we kind of get into something else that we want to make for people. Uh -huh. And a couple years ago she decided that she wanted to make candles. I had a little bag of lavender and so we got these weck jars. I really like using weck jars. We got soy wax, we just got it from I think Michael's maybe? One of the, one of the craft stores that you can just go in and buy the wax. She got the brand now. Lavender and then she did spearmint and eucalyptus. So we made the candles for some reason the oil settled in a different spot We didn't really research it. We just kind of knew that we had to melt the wax. I had one of these one of these Measuring cups that we just used for wax, but it did not turn out well and also some of the wax looked brown So we didn't do it right. <laughs> I think there's a process. Oh, uh, this one guy I find the link to his channel, he does really good candle making tutorials that are probably gonna make a lot more sense than this and it'll be more straightforward. I watched his tutorial and it just seemed like, oh, I could, at each step I was like, I could do that, I yeah. could do that, I could do that. <laughs> Get nice big containers to keep, yeah. especially if you live with someone else and you just don't want, like, Nick isn't here right now and Jackie will tolerate it and Nick would too, but like I hate having like everything out and about, so. You're very good at nice putting your stuff like away. This. I got these at Staples actually. We're at, one pound, eight ounces. Wow, so that's a that is a, a pound of wax. wax. I'm gonna get the water started boiling. Okay. In the meantime, we're going to find our scent. Again, I've been mentioning Candle Science. These are their scents. They come, this is in the smallest size they come in, which is I think two ounces, just one ounce. One ounce of, of liquid will make a pound of wax candles. So that's the ratio. A pound of wax, an ounce of scent. Everything I have been making has been a blend, because I like the idea of blending a bunch of them. But a lot of their oils, remember, like are already a blend of a bunch of scents. So I think it's totally fine to just get one and dump it into your, like, you have the measurement. If you do a pound of wax, just dump it in, call it a day. If you're not feeling like you'd like, it's too intimidating to buy this many um, scents. The thing that's nice about the website too is that 
this is high tide, which I remember I liked like the description of, but I didn't. I don't remember right now what it's like, what it makes. Yeah. So, or well, not what it makes. What all? What like what is the alchemy of high tide? I just know how it smells when I open it. That smells super beachy. Mmm. Which is like obviously. Smells like a tide. like a nice hotel lobby. Yeah, that's nice. So that one, like, you may just want to leave something like that alone. This one is the other one I mentioned. I think maybe earlier, but the wooden wick, and they're out based out of Lagoon Beach, and their scents are. That is the, like, the perfect Christmas yeah, scent. Yeah, that's Christmas. So How did you determine what pack, what scents to purchase? They just, like, there were certain ones that I think the way that they described them on the website or something. Yeah. I also just sit down each time and like, what is going to like yeah. ring my bell right now? And pineapple. Pineapple feel kind of like fun right now. It's pineapple sage. I'm not getting the sage really. Although it's kind of a subdued pineapple. Oh yeah. Do you like pineapple? Uh. It's definitely an acquired. And I mean, I like eating ooh, pineapple. I like eating pineapple. Black Guys, is nice. you know what I realized? I do like pepper. Oh, I like that. Yeah. This one's really nice. This so you're one gonna do so one pound of one cent, right? I did a pound and a half. A pound and a half of one cent. Yes. Okay. So this one is so crazy. Smell this: sweet Look orange this and sriracha. This, this is, like, is dry gin. And this cypress. Is so, this is when I feel like you leave alone. The fact that they're blending sweet orange and sriracha. This is like kitchen. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. This reminds me of something from my childhood. Sweet and smoke could almost go well with something kind of sweet, I think. I have a black cherry Merlot one. I almost wonder if, it's like, now that I'm sitting here and talking through it, like, there are certain ones that I think, like, whiskey. Yeah. Would go well with something else. Yeah. I made an old fashioned candle that yeah. smells like it has orange in it. That so is so you weird don't want a whole that it's. Of that. Yeah. It's just like someone spilled a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. But this with Fireside or yeah. something. All right, so I'm feeling like. It's like layering. Suede and smoke is exciting right now, but smell that. Like that just needs a little bit to me. Sandalwood's. I think I bought sandalwood thinking I like the word, but I actually don't know if I like how sandalwood yeah. smells. All right, I'm almost done here. Black cherry Merlot in suede and smoke. I think we're gonna go for it. I almost wonder if it needs one more thing because I don't know, I don't have enough left of black cherry Merlot. Fig tree's really nice. Fig tree's, and that's the other thing too, is like I think there's top note, this is something I don't yeah. know enough about. Yeah. There's top notes, middle notes, and yeah. like bottom notes, and I think if, I, if I'm implying correctly, I would want the bottom note to be the suede and smoke like coming through maybe like underneath everything, yeah. but above it, the sweetness of black cherry Merlot, and then fig tree, which is to me, is very neutral. Like this just blends, I think, yeah. nice. It's nice, but it's not like gonna give you too, too much. Yes. So those three, where you have like sweetness on the top, something neutral in the middle, and then smoke, suede and smoke in the bottom. I have no idea what I'm talking about, by the way, but. Call me this tiny candle for me. It's so It smells so good, it smells. Yeah, I've been buying like little fun things at um, thrift shops. Yeah. I've always bought glassware, and then I bring it to the markets and nobody ever buys it because nobody needs glassware. And so now I have a reason to buy it and actually do something with it. These are the two I have the least of. I have the Sweden Smoke, so I'm gonna like finish that out. But I, what I want here is um, one and a half ounces because I did a pound and a half of wax. Yeah. And like I said, a pound of wax, an ounce. So pound and a half, ounce and a half. We'll start with the Black Cherry Merlot because I don't have a lot. So that will come out to 0.3 ounces. This is when I'm always like, write down your measurements because I never remember. Because in case someone does like it and they're like, can you make that again? All right, here's the fig tree. I have a lot more of that, but I still, I want the suede and smoke to come through like not overpowering, so yeah. that's good. We're gonna finish that out. And now the rest will be suede and smoke. I love that, okay, this is gonna be nice, I think. Ooh, that's good, okay. And that's an ounce and a half of oil. And then I still get like a little whiff, even though it's Water is boiling. Candle wax is ready. And the oil is waiting. Another thing I really like is the wood wicks. That was a good choice. The wood wicks are a great choice because- They make that little noise. When you get, they make noise. And when you get started, these are from the Wooden Wick Company in Laguna Beach. They're a little pricier, but I found a little hack that I'll show you worked for me to save a little money. The thing with like, I have been able to start learning how to work with these guys. Oh yeah. You buy, these are cheaper and obviously more. At the craft store, I just got a bag. I mean, purchased a bag of them. Yeah. These, once you start 
maybe yeah. more of them. These are good for something longer like this. But the it also takes, what I do is I take like, to keep the wick upright while the, wicks is, yeah. while the wax is settling, I get it long enough that I take a um, chip clip and put it at the top so that it holds it upright. I made a candle um, on my Instagram live from yeah. old wax that I had melted down from like five different candles. It all, I poured it into a little thing with cold water, all the wax sat on top like a plastic disc. I can send you pictures of it. And then I melted it into this candle, which I blended with other wax. Like I had, I measured how much wax I had. So you can see why the color is different. That's the color of all that's the candles. That's a beautiful color. Smell that. Oh, that's nice. And I gave this away on Instagram for people. I said, if you donate $10 to charity, whoever does it first gets this. I need to get the jars right now. These are also from, believe it or not, Candle Science. And the other thing I'm trying to do is save packaging because I'm gonna be sending some out as gifts for Christmas. Six, I think I have one here. So I just need one more. And the way that I do it, I think there's probably plenty of ways to do this. I tried craft glue, and once the wax got in there, sometimes it popped out, and I didn't want that anymore. So I'm do, I am I saw the guy whose tutorial I watched use hot, uh, hot glue, and that's the way I would go. Fun hack is this. The wicks that I got, I'm gonna guess these are probably, they come in different sizes, and I just took a gamble and ended up getting these. But what's great is when you put them in and you make your candle, See how much they stick out? Yeah. Trim them as low as you can, like right there, and you can get yourself another one out of it. But what it does is, then I just go to the company and I just get these. And so you end up being able to utilize more. Depending on, e like I jumped into buying everything because I get that way where I'm like, I just want to buy everything in one night. And it, So do I, that's part of the excitement. But if you are going to do some research, just look at how big your vessels are going to be. I'm just gonna glue bottom as fast as possible because it's hot melt glue and just put it right in the middle like that. This is probably something that you should be more attentive to once you first get started with wax. But since I've been making so many now, I feel comfortable that I just take it, double boiler, put it into the pot like that. And this will take a while, let it sit. But if you're just doing it for the first time, don't walk away from it. These guys out. If you, I use them for these wicks too. Like these are just really good ways to keep your wicks settled in the bottom. They make um, battery charged glue guns. They should. Yeah, they should. Wireless glue guns. They really should. That's always the issue, isn't it? It's like keeping that. Glue guns remind me of my childhood because I feel like we made so I many. I loved doing glue, glue, glue gun, <laughs> glue gun projects. Yeah. And we could just like sticks from the yard and make like. Stick it to anything. Glue. Have you come up with any like Disney legacy scents? <laughs> Not really. I leave that to the experts, the ones that they've made business. There's so many businesses have found ways to bring Disney home to us. I'm trying to bring Palm Springs home to people. Yeah. So meditative too. I don't feel like crafting and jumping. Jackie and I did couch crafts last night. Anything that takes your mind off whatever may be on your mind that you don't want on your mind, that's 2020. The other thing is too, is once you um, get the wax into the vessels, you'll see that the wicks may be a little off center, but when the wax is still liquid, it's very malleable. Like you can move your wick around a little bit. So don't worry too much about the placement at yeah. this point, especially with a vessel this small. Yeah. As long as it's in the middle, it's gonna burn. And okay. it's gonna burn like, well. Let's check on the wax. It melts really quickly. I like to do one straight line so I'm not like right. arching over anything. Yeah, you're very precise about this. Well, getting better when you learn with each like time you do something. I am not precious about this at all. If you see that I'm doing something wrong, like you're an expert candle maker and you're like, ah, oh, don't do that. Comment below. Also, like, don't, don't go like jumping into this based on this tutorial. Watch a few more. <laughs> I'm no expert on this. I just like experimenting. There's so many good people on YouTube who make like full channels just based on candles. And Candle Science has tutorials too. 
If you go to their website, their tutorials, I watched one woman who does them, who goes live. I follow them on Instagram and I followed her live. She was doing piping where you like pour it into a bag and then you like, whoa, and it totally failed. But she was so like sweet about it and very like, that's the thing with being yeah. out there, right? Like we're going to make mistakes. Part of making things and being a maker, I think is that you just have to keep trying, trying, trying and see what you like and see what you. I'm using only oils, Yeah. but like I've been reading a lot it's of stuff where like people use actual spices in their candles and things like that. Like, how does that work? Like we floated, well, that was the one thing that did work out was we floated the pieces of lavender were on top of our candles that we made. And I liked how that looked. Oh yeah, it's almost melted. Get yourself a good thermometer. Each bottle, it'll say the flash point. This says 219 degrees. So what is that? That's the temperature you're supposed to have the wax at when you add scent. That may be why my candles don't have the biggest throw or like retain scent because I don't let the wax get that hot. I'm a little bit cautious because I have heard that wax can catch on fire if you get it to a high temperature. I don't know how accurate that is or not. And so I'm still just starting. Many, many websites say that 180 is a perfectly good temperature okay. to add wax. So. I've been like inching up more and more as I've been doing it just to see if my temperature, if, if I, like I get it to a higher temperature, maybe it'll have a better throw. I don't know if that's like a necessary thing, especially if you're blending scents, if flash points, if some are higher than others, but 180 seems to be the universal temperature that most people have agreed on is yeah. like when you can add your fragrance. And like right now, it's getting there. So we're at 176, see how there's still a piece of a bit large chunk in there right now? There's still like a little piece that needs oh, yeah, to melt down. Bottom. So I'm gonna let this go maybe for a few more minutes and see how much higher I can get it. We're pushing 183, 184, 185 right now, so I gotta pour soon. Okay. Take our wax out, do you wanna see it? Yeah. Keep it on something that can retain heat. So there's no, there isn't any unmelted wax in there. Nope. Ooh, in it goes, get every last drop in. I give it a good stir. Fuzzy pouring. Nice, cautious pour. I usually go up to the line first on the inside. Oh my god, I love this already. It smells really nice. Go right up to the line that's on the inside of the vessel as a starting point, and then you end up having more wax. Pound and a half, as I said, is getting us definitely to seven full uh, six ounce candles. A little bit more for each one. You see the ones that we cut, how that one's just poking out? That's just the amount of height you need. So the other ones, so you I'm just gonna cut them cut, afterwards. I'm gonna cut when they're all, yeah, once the wax is hardened. Now this is where I've heard different things about, like the wax, I don't want it to sit in here. So what I tend to do is I put it, just quickly, put it up, put it in the sink. I'll use the boiling water that was on the stove. And there's not that much wax in there that like I have to worry about it clogging anything. It just. It. And if there was more wax to worry about, I would, I would, not, I would let it sit and cool. But there's like, you can kind of see on the top, it's just like almost like an oil. Yeah. So. That out. And you said there's not enough that it would clog the no. sink or anything. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the sink clogged? If you just get a paper towel, you can wipe out the rest. And that to me is just so that you don't have to worry about like wax is so hard to get out you can smell the, the oil in there. Oh yeah. So I'm curious how to get that scent out of there in the easiest, least sort of me doing tons of cold water, like wasting cold water. I think what I'm just gonna have to resort to, like now that I've talked it through, is just buying like four or five of them yeah. and dishwashing them. Yeah, check on them. Now, this is the other thing. Okay, so how I mentioned, like look at this whack, this wick right here right now, a little bit uh, tilted to the side. Yeah. Since it's glued down, you can just gently nudge it upright and the bracket itself, so almost, I'll try to look at it from like above to see if how centered it is. Yeah. So these will sit. This is, I'm excited because this one feels very different than, I was looking for a scent that smells different than what I have. I don't know, this feels like a nighttime Sets candle. a mood, yeah. sets a mood. It reminds me of like evenings, like especially during the holidays, but I like also that this like, I made a bunch of holiday candles that I think could work whether or not it is or isn't Christmas, but this one feels like it could be holidays, but also could be maybe like in taking you into early 2021, mm -hmm. January evening by the fire, kind of like lodge. And there you go. There you have it. Love it. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's smell the candle. 
Ooh. Oh, it's really nice. 